Hello, Panthers. Um, we're going to be talking about an article called That's Life Today. It's in your book on page 30 and 31. And um, once in a while, when we do an article, I will read this. And so you have the option to uh, read it to yourself and or um, read it um, with me. So here we go. Imagine yourself taking a pleasant walk down a forest path made of soil and tiny pieces of rock. The sun is shining through the leaves of the trees towering over your head, and the birds in the trees combine their various songs. Small plants in the path, and you will small plants line the path, and you will see a small waterfall tumbling over rocks just where the path curves. A deer leans down for a drink of water from a pool just a few feet from a glittering crystal that reflects the sun's light in a rainbow of colors. When people think of an environment such as a forest trail, they notice all the evidence of life around them. However, a healthy environment includes abiotic factors or non-living things, as well as biotic factors or living things. Biotic factors would include all the organisms, plants, animals, fungi, bacteria, and other living things. What types of abiotic factors are present in the forest trail environment? What types of biotic factors are present? What are the differences between abiotic factors and biotic factors? Characteristics of living things. All living things share certain characteristics. All living things are composed of cells, grow, reproduce, and eventually die. All living things show movement. Some only move things inside their bodies Others can also move from place to place. All living things exchange gases with their environment. Plants take in carbon dioxide and give off oxygen. Both plants and animals take in oxygen and give off carbon dioxide. All living things need energy for life processes. Plants use energy from the sun to manufacture their own food and, in turn, use that food as an energy source. Other organisms must take in food and break it down into small molecules to harvest the energy from them. The life processes of living things produce waste and that must excrete. All living things respond some way to changes in the environment. While non-living things may have one or more of these characteristics, living things must meet all of the characteristics listed. Characteristics of non-living things. There are many non-living things that seem like they might fit in the definition of having life. The crystal by the forest pool is a highly organized array of atoms. A crystal of salt, for example, has a lattice of chlorine and sodium atoms that extend in a pattern from one end of the crystal to another. This gives the appearance that the crystal is reproducing. Although crystals grow, they do not reproduce. All a crystal can do is add to itself. It does not take in energy to fuel its processes, and it does not excrete. Since sunlight provides energy that plants use to make their food, wouldn't sunlight be considered a living thing? Although it is a source of energy, sunlight is an abiotic factor in an environment. It does not share the characteristics of living things because it does not have cells. It also does not reproduce, produce waste, or make or take in food. Soil is a combination of both abiotic and biotic factors because it includes both living and non-living components. If you look at a soil sample under a microscope, you might see a piece of dead organisms or small living things, including microorganisms. You would also see tiny particles of rocks and sand. Sometimes particles of the environment, like soil, are not easy to classify as abiotic or biotic. While many things meet one or more of the characteristics of living things, if not all the criteria met, an object is not living or biotic. Yet, as you see from the forest trail, living and non-living things interact in environments all the time.